Welcome. We are here at Show Studio at the beginning of Milan Fashion Week and I have a panel of esteemed women. My name is Karen Franklin. I'm going to be chairing it and I'm going to ask them each to introduce themselves before we begin chatting about fashion and other marvellous F-words. <laughs> Over to you. I'm Sasha Wilkins. Um, I'm an ex-fashion editor and the founder and editor of LibertyLondonGirl.com. I'm Andrea Gelladin and I represent fashion filmmakers. I'm Angela Scanlon and I'm a TV presenter, fashion writer and stylist. Thank you ladies. So brilliant um, varied panel here. What I'd like to do, we're obviously waiting for it to start and there's a bit of time for the pre-match amble, which is actually my favourite bit, mm -hmm. is just find out a little bit more about what each of you do because we know our audience is varied but many of them will be looking for an insight into um, the fashion industry and all its mm -hmm. um, glory. So um, Sasha, tell us a bit more about your... Um, well, I started out at Condé Nast about 15 years ago making tea. I had the Devil Wears Prada job. I was a second assistant <laughs> to the editorial director there, who was very nice and never threw a fur coat at me. Um, and <laughs> always a positive. Always a positive. <laughs> um, and I sort of worked my way up. And over time, I've been a broadcaster, stylist, editor, executive fashion editor. Most recently, I was a fashion director at the Wall Street Journal's WSJ magazine in New York. But six years ago, I started a blog as my diary, anonymously, of my life in America, never expecting it to be read by anyone. I'd have come up with a better name if I did. Um, and I'm very lucky now. I like the name. Yeah, I so do Thank I. you. But I'm not sure that the store is quite so happy about it. But yeah. you, on that, have you had them? I heard from a confidential source that Geoffroy, the old CEO of Liberty, was distinctly unamused, but was told that the whole David Goliath thing of taking me on would have been a very bad idea. Absolutely. Um, but Plus, you've got loads of subscribers now. Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah. So you they should sponsor you. I mean, that yeah. would be a clever mm. move. Well, we, the, all my readers call me LLG, so we kind get around it that way yeah, but okay. um, we reach you know, 100,000 people each month so it's been a really exciting journey across lots of platforms across film the blog Twitter so it's been a great journey and for me having been a traditional magazine editor yeah. in the pre-email pre-cell phone days to now be working wholly in digital is so exciting for me I yeah. love it yeah no, we'll talk a bit more about that actually because the whole fashion landscape has changed so much mm -hmm. so Andrea tell us a bit more about so your speaking of digital yeah. I obviously work with fashion film um, so my angle is you know we're working with lots of different brands to make amazing fashion films so when I talk about fashion I'm always I'm usually talking about it from a solely clothes 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 point of view because the business is just whatever, and in what we're doing, we're only interested if they're amazing clothes, we want to make amazing films with them. It's sort of simple as that, that's normally where we start from. Okay, and so, but the, the clients that you work with? A whole array, yeah. So, luxury brands, I've worked with Gucci before, uh, Louis Vuitton, Prada, Swarovski, and also much smaller up and coming brands, and there's obviously a big difference between working with more established sure. ones. And, and their brief well. to you would be what? Your, your it's for well, marketing for ma it varies massively. Sometimes there's no brief at all, and sometimes they're very specific about the usage of the film. That's more their brief, or the brief could be very creative. So that really varies a lot. Right. Okay, Angela, let's come to you. So behind the camera, in front of the camera, <laughs> they're both. Yeah. Depends on the day. Um, started behind scraping to tape off shoes. You know, like styling. So carrying bags building up my biceps and my <laughs> left arm uh, and yeah just generally kind of getting stuck in and being quite creative and then from there moved in I actually did quite a lot of personal shopping which is not that sexy but very effective uh, and then <laughs> did um, a lot of fashion writing from from styling I've always really had a had a passion for writing and it would kind of felt like a, a natural transition and then move from there to in front of the camera but kind of purely for our um, because I felt like there was a bit of a gap for something that's a little bit more, you know, fashion kind of led in, in terms of what TV offers. So, yeah, but I mean, I've done a movie show, I've done lots of different stuff, so it's not solely fashion, but that's absolutely the starting point for everything with me, really. But I want to pick up on you saying, so I've done a little bit of personal shopping. Yeah. That, for me, is quite an important insight and a contact with the end user of fashion, yeah. which a lot of people in our industry don't always have. Mm -hmm. What did you learn? Um, you know what? I actually 
I suppose, yes, yeah, sometimes there is a disconnect between what you see on a catwalk and what people actually ultimately end up buying. I think digital as, you know, this has made fashion so much more inclusive and, and accessible to people a lot of the time. You, I would have had, you know, clients who found the whole landscape of fashion quite intimidating and, and mm. a little bit terrifying and felt like it wasn't really something they were entitled to, to have an opinion on and I think blogs have changed that, uh, access to shows live as they're happening have changed it and made people feel entitled to see it, entitled to form an opinion and, and quite an informed opinion as well and I think, oh lovely. You've got a little bit, a little bit of live, <laughs> come on that. there, that, the, um, the backstage. I think you're right, that. because yeah. the thing with, with blogging is that you're talking direct to the reader. I have mm -hmm. no yeah. advertisers on my site, mm. so I have no commercial let or mm. hindrance in what I do. And I think it's great that people now don't need to have things explained, that they can form their own opinion. Yeah. Mm. And I yeah. think that's been the biggest change, yeah. hasn't it? Mm. And I think also at the source, when you're seeing and consuming and making a, an, a, an immediate opinion, you don't have the kind of infiltration of media and uh, you know so the trend yeah. edits six months later are formed over a long period of time when things have kind of settled whereas now people can go yeah I really like that and buy it in an immediate sense and I think that's kind of changed how we how we consume too you know. Mm -hmm. Topshop this season have done Be The Buyer yeah. so people watching the live show on Google, the Google right. Hangouts could then pick the images off the runway, create mood boards and mm. for course, a top shop, it's given them this amazing right. commercial mm. information because mm. they yeah. can see the pieces that the mm. viewers of the that show are liking and put those into production. Yeah, yeah. it's clever, really mm. clever. But top shop mm. are so clever, and even the model cam, where you know people sitting at home can see the view as a model sees it. All the photographers, all the pap like it's quite. Um, they're very innovative, and I think the the quality of what they produce, kind of you know, and the production feels like you're at a high end show what people can access it immediately, which is kind of cool. That, I think that's the, um, that's the amazing upside of digital, mm -hmm. isn't it? That now we're all kind of interactive and we're, we all can have an opinion. Um, and uh, in some ways we can engage with fashion and influence it in a way that we couldn't do. Yeah. Do you think there's any downsides? I think everybody's sitting front row trying to get the first picture and tweet it out. <laughs> <laughs> the franticness of that has kind of gone a little bit I think compared to a couple of seasons ago when, when Twitter had just come out literally everyone sat there with their phones whereas now I notice people literally take it up for the finale so they get an overview but they actually look at it and I think sometimes when you're sitting in the space and watching a show you're actually not really seeing it because you're looking at it through mm. a photo mm. and seeing whether you captured it whether it's blurred instead of kind of getting a good look mm. at the fabrication and all of those kind of things so yeah. yeah I think the downside is like at a concert viewing the act through your iPhone I mean it's kind of not really living mm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. there's, yeah. there's upshots and, and downsides yeah. I guess. What about you Andrea? You no know? I was just gonna say you've got to keep up with everything it's a bit confusing because no, some people don't really understand it or, or how it's all going to go and the downside would be for you know, brands or people with roles that are traditionally one way and all of a sudden you know, for them to be successful you know, financially or otherwise they really have to be keeping up with the changing digital space and I think that's quite difficult. Mm -hmm. in it, if, well, very difficult for people who don't understand what's going on right. in the digital space and don't understand. But do you I mean, mean on a technical level or do you mean on an information well, level? Well, no, on just sort of how to monetize it all or right. how, you know, or how, what it means really for, for a shop or for, mm. you know, lots of people with certain defined roles in fashion that now, you know, they're going to really have to think outside the box to keep up with. Well, to survive, actually. Yeah. <laughs> As they are, though, with yeah. Topshop and you know, yeah. copying so really some people the doing very well. yeah. initiative. Mm. Aren't yeah. They? Yeah, yeah, really impressive. Yeah. I was yeah. saying before that we will have to be on time to the shows now. Yes. Yes. Mm. None of yes. the old-fashioned thing of, oh, we're 40 minutes late, it doesn't matter, they won't have started yet. <laughs> now, yeah. I mean, run... Ooh, there was that's so much, such an upside, though. There was yeah, so yeah. much... <laughs> <laughs> there was, I think, the London Wall was shut and Christopher Kane was showing in the city and everyone was getting out of their cars and running, running. to Cannon Street yeah. in their four-inch heels. Yeah. And as this kind of flood of people, I saw Justine Picardy, the editor-in-chief of Harper's Bazaar, and all these people rather dem democratically sprinting down yeah. Cannon Street. Mm. And the city guy was coming towards us and he turned to his friend and went, 
Is there a fancy dress show in London? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> because of the live streams, we have to be on time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I think that's a good thing, Total isn't it? Total upside. Yeah. No yeah. more but sitting waiting at half past ten at night yeah. for the final show of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. But if I was an editor, so sitting at one of those shows, I'd be, I mean, there was all these upsides, but I'd be quite worried as well, because obviously magazines in all of this are sort of, they must be questioning how the hell they fit into all of this. Because, you know, everyone is sitting there with their phone, everyone is live streaming, everyone's doing this, mm. that and the other. And it's like, well, slightly old news. Yeah. Well, oh, figures are going yesterday, down. Yesterday, I'll announce a new digital director who's mm. come from the managing editor of, managing director of yeah. AOL, yeah. is yeah. now the digital director yeah. at L. Mm. And I think that's yeah. a very savvy, very clever appointment yeah. because yeah. she's yeah. going to be integrating everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the, the real key is that integration, which is kind of lacking in in a lot of the publications and it's kind of I mean they can definitely coexist I think magazines are just going to become more exclusive more visual so that it's you know really focused on beautiful styling that gives a, a real sense of the publication and their identity and then really great features I think writing needs to be to be really strong as well but I, I think they can coexist I hope they can I mean there's nothing like the smell of a fresh magazine mm. <laughs> like, I, know, I mean I'm quite die. intrigued to see that mm. Condé Nast have announced that Alex Shulman is the head of digital at Condé Nast yes. because <coughs> Alex Shulman doesn't like digital very much yeah. and has said some really quite aggressive things right. about the blogging community in the yeah, past. I agree. Right. So I'm, I can't say I'm a massive fan of that appointment. Yeah. She <laughs> gave a quote to the Independent the other day saying, over my dead body will Vogue features appear online. Well, how can you possibly yeah. say that? Because who knows what formats will be available, maybe you'll put them behind yeah. a paywall. Yeah. But to say categorically it's never going to happen seems quite a weird statement from a head of digital. Yeah, yeah and that's what I meant by keeping up as well. Yeah. You, know, you can't really hang around like a sort of dinosaur in this situation. <laughs> yeah, no, and you need to embrace change. And actually, I, mm. I watched an interview recently with um, Frida Gianni, I can remember. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Gianni, no, uh, Gianni, uh, and <laughs> Susan Menkes, and she spoke about her kind of, you know, she's really forward thinking and how her, uh, the head of marketing had yes. come to her and told her that the young customer, like late teens, early 20s, and the future of their customer base, I guess, consumed media and content through online, 43%, 47% actually, versus 3% through papers and Amazing. magazines. And she kind of was, was quite shocked initially by this figure and then thought, actually, we need to, to keep up with this mm. and really aggressively go after it and, and build that as part of the brand. So people really want to, to know about the heritage. They want to feel like they're getting information yeah. that is not just, here's the clothes, if you like them, buy them, if you don't, don't. They want to feel a sense of ownership and build that loyalty. So I think, and, and Christopher Bailey has done it obviously exceptionally yeah. well. Gucci, less so known for it, but I, but I think chasing well, a similar thing. you'd be thing. surprised though, Gucci over the last two years had, had an extraordinary digital director yeah. who's just been poached by Valentino. Okay. Obviously I know this because because I'm one of the very few kind of senior editor journalists who mm -hmm. made a successful blog and actually made that leap quite a long time ago, yeah. I get approached by the very high-end houses mm -hmm. because they know that I'll write a nice feature and I'll come at it maybe from a jazz point mm -hmm. of view, it's still that engagement you get in a blog. And Gucci have always been incredibly proactive and yeah. now that Caitlin's at Valentino, I get invited to couture which I didn't go to as a fashion editor. Never yeah, got a seat for couture. couture. Yeah. That's and interesting. And now I'm sitting yeah. at Valentino. Yeah. I was the only blogger there um, in January. Yeah, brilliant. Wow. And they are really engaging. Yeah, and quite an extraordinary space. way. Yeah. And I'm doing a story in the jewelry atelier at Louis Vuitton during the Paris collections mm. for my site. To me, even three years ago, that would have been absolutely mm. unimaginable mm. that they would be reaching out to a blog to place a feature like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and there's no editorial constraint. They're not telling me what to do. Mm. They're right. going to let me go in there with a camera yeah. and my own voice. Well, that's yeah. great. But I'm you're sorry. linking back into their whole sort of selling online presence mm. in a way that a magazine doesn't yet do. Yeah. Right. Although there is technology, and I'm sure you've heard of this, that's, that's coming through, and it was actually um, f coming from the Ministry of Defence, where they encapsulate this, all this information mm. in a small so dot. Everything's shoppable. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now, I mean, I would have thought magazines would have just gone, hurrah, it's what we're waiting for, you know. Yes. And that, 
is oh, I don't think there's the any route. future for magazines unless they become shoppable. Yeah, I think too. within the next two or three yeah. years, if you can't yeah. shop direct from the page, people will just be like, what's Forget the point? It. But yeah. I think the difficulty <laughs> that arises there is that publications are shot in advance, they shoot samples that perhaps don't go into production, so suddenly the shopability, if you want to call it that, kind of becomes, it, it's a much trickier thing, whereas, say, the edit that Netta Porte have just launched, right is a very, I mean, it makes Commercial. absolute sense. You go yeah. on, you get the content, there's a mm. focus on real quality content and editorial, and then you click through and you buy Interestingly, it. Interestingly though, Lucy gave an interview, Lucy Yeomans, the yeah. editor, saying that they were going to have content in edit that wasn't available on Netta Porte, okay. because she felt that she couldn't build a credible fashion publication, right. which she was only trammeled by Netta Porte's buy. Mm. So I'm very interested to see how they work yeah. with the shopper girls, because I think you're absolutely right. If things are only you know, model zone or mm -hmm. stylus zone, it's, kind of it's going to affect mm -hmm. the magazine's bottom line in the future. So yeah. it's a really interesting point. Mm. Mm. I'm going to go. We're we're sort of looking at it excitedly, and we're <laughs> waiting for something to happen. Mm. But I'm just get, going to kind of throw a curveball really. And um, good Sassy, you know, you know me well enough to know um, what's coming next. But you know, for me, one of the things I talked about was there any downsides of digital? I mean, I find it supremely exciting and fascinating and we couldn't be doing this for a start um, if we didn't have the opportunity to view it in this way and to talk about it to everybody who's watching online but does it mean in the promotion of fashion you know, <laughs> the prolific promotion of it that we are promoting now an ideal a body ideal that was meant for trade you know trade talking to trade buyers talking to press using the very streamlined body to showcase clothes oh. um, does that have implications now i'm just going to check something's come up is that have we got that, Is that awesome? does it look like we've got it come through well good okay so we're <laughs> i'm just going to say quickly that alex shulman said the other day that she wants to start giving people the 24 hours behind a shoot so that young women looking at the shoots in her magazine will understand what goes into the process of making a model look that way because yes. she doesn't want people to think that that's an easy yeah. thing to achieve. Yeah. I thought that was brilliant. Yes, yeah, that, that's the space, isn't it, that they've been looking at. But let's, we'll, we'll come back to that. We're just starting to get a hint Obscene stocking, certainly. Um, <laughs> which we saw on the London runways mm -hmm. as well. A couple and of that shows. looks like moss green, which is everywhere. Like yes, yes. And it's so quite much a green. few shows, yeah. Dallas yeah. Templey had lovely seam stockings. Yeah, mm. and the, the panelling there. So the textures. Because London felt very much about texture and extraordinary, yeah. beautiful work yeah. materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, we should say this is a this is an interesting space. Rhythms, the yeah. sort of Milanese projection. Jonathan Saunders did a dress that had that same very similar neckline mm -hmm. with that it's emphasis on the clavicle yeah. and the top right. of the bosom. Right. But here we see, you know, in looking at the Milanese approach, you know, we it's a different identity, isn't right. it? Right. It's, it's a completely different approach, sexy, exactly. and I mean that's what. Gucci's DNA is kind of... Yeah. I think we yeah. said this last season that sometimes you're looking at it and you think their clothes are being bought for women by men. Yeah. Or for women whose clothes are paid for by men. <laughs> I always think with a brand that's got such a strong sort of heritage or old sort of foundations that it must be quite hard as a designer to get the balance right between kind of paying homage to the archive collection, beautiful thing, and being sort of forward thinking and modern. They mm. sort of get attacked either way well, <laughs> in reviews. Kind of it's just mm. tricky. That. Do you remember that 19, was it 1996 collection? You just did it so mm. perfectly. Yeah. He put snaffles and everything, but made it like the sexiest thing you've yeah. ever seen. And I think he kind of blew it out of the water and moved yeah. it from being a brand that was quite focused yeah. on style and heritage into something that was much more fashion forward. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I guess you have to you get pressures. What the I mean balance, is you get yeah. pressures from you know PPR or whoever mm -hmm. to get that balance right. It's interesting that she's using this lower hemline as well, yeah. which we saw Oscar de la Renta, it was mm -hmm. four inches below the knee. There's it's a lot of this burgundy pony skin and yeah, again texture but not mm. in a really voluminous kind of way, it's a bit sleeker and more sophisticated almost. But, but fitted and yeah. femme fatale, it's that. I mean, I always love that space for the autumn winter projections because I love the layers. I always find that there's yeah. not enough to look at. Well, it's much more relevant to us in yeah. this. Yeah. Country. Yeah. <laughs> I think sometimes spring summer yes. you're like, what the hell am I going to wear 
Yes. 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 But that thing yeah. you were saying about the Milanese production of the show, I mean, it's just yeah. on another level, isn't it? Yes. The glossy runway and the cast of thousands. What do we, what, when we think of Milanese fashion, what do we um, expect in <laughs> comparison to British? We've just come out of um, British Fashion Week where there was amazing energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a different energy, totally different. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Sex. There's always a lot sex, more sex. Yes. Right. Unless you're at Marnie, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and then there's none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, 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 I know what you mean. It's grown I mean, up and I think it's more polished in a way. It's kind of... I think it's so more, much more money to yeah, play with. Yeah. It always reminds me of these like 70s sort of styles and sort of reinvented prints and reinvented styles and reinvented it's all everything reminds me of sort of Something looking backwards seen, yeah. yeah or posters we had when we were kids mm. you know of the classic mm. handbag or the classic loafer or this or that i don't know that's completely different to how you look at london shows isn't it yeah. obviously but i think frida her like decade is the 70s so there's always you know a hint of that although mm. pre-fall was much more kind of 50s which is a little bit reminiscent of that first dress that we saw mm. The kind of berry coloured. I, I really think. don't like the music on the show. I, I don't about? Like, yeah, I mean, that music is a really important part of the show. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's just it's distracting. It's, it's interesting, interesting how much more covered up this is. I've definitely mm. felt that in London. But the age of the kind of bodycon warrior princess mm. on her stackly tight heels. Thank God. It's thank just a, the Lord. It, yeah. I do not need to look like a pole as my accessory. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, There's a lot of this kind of metallic lame as well, mm. which I'm kind of into. And sleeves. Mm. Like a sleeve. We do. So you wonder whether that's a, a response to kind of commercial, like who is the Gucci customer? Is she a woman who wants to cover her arms and whether that's a, quite a conscious move? But it, it has to be always a balance between yes. delivering for commercial yeah. um, and obviously um, appealing to those who will photograph. Absolutely. And ultimately, yeah, right. you know, we know that what we often see on the runway isn't the thing. It's not the that same. It's never an induction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's always the interesting shop. thing to go to the showroom, yeah. to see the runway yeah. collection, which is, what, 60 pieces. Yeah. And then you see the selling collection of 500 pieces yeah. and see how they've filtered down the runway looking yeah. at their selling yeah. collection. Yeah. But there's, therein lies the difference, I think, between between you know, the big international players and many British designers, they don't have the money to do that. So often what they sell is straight off the runway. Right. So they have to, in some ways, do the job of promoting the kind of mm. London energy, mm. but then also um, appeal to buyers with something that is much more uh, a commercial for yeah. all of the customers in the individual boutiques. Up and down the country. Do you remember that very bizarre Chris Kane runway collection had all the lava lamp pieces on it? Yeah. Which on the runway, I have to say, was not my favourite mm. thing. But when you saw it in the store, it had been diluted to such a degree. Mm. It was little black dresses with lava lamp trims. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of them were on Valkyrie, so you could take all the lava lamp stuff off completely. Yeah. Yeah. And it had changed so much. Mm. Even though he didn't necessarily have a, a separate selling collection, they just listen to the buyers, buyers and change yeah. the whole completely. And actually yeah. I had a, a discussion with Michael Vanderham last night who said the same thing, that he's selling to the States and to the Middle East and that a lot of his dresses have just been adapted to make Absolutely. them floor length. And mm -hmm. it's kind of is, you know, not being reluctant and listening yeah. to the person who pays the bills. And I think designers but are this, more switched this on This does to go that. back to my point of what the consumer being served by what they see online so that they buy into what is essentially a trade dialogue mm. and they see it as sometimes quite an unachievable yes. look. Um, w you know, we're looking at it, understanding that, mm. um, and not knowing that part of the process is that buyers will go, we love that, but we'll have sleeves, we'll have it longer lengths. And can yeah. we have it in pink? Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. we have it in pink? And can we have it in sizes that are applicable to well, our yes. customers? It's a big issue with the American collections, as they've been so, the American designs have been so dictated to by the department stores for years, which is why the American collections are always so hideously dull yes. yeah. because they're yeah. just department store oriented. Yeah. And at yeah, least we don't have that issue in Europe. And I hope we, I hope this it's emphasis on the balance, shopping the runway, yeah. which Topshop and Burberry everyone are doing, doesn't start to dilute the collections too much. Yeah. yeah, that's an interesting outcome maybe to see mm. whether suddenly shopping directly from the runway means that they now want to the, the we, to we, give them all of those commercial touches. A lot touches. of the Burberry reviews yeah. did mm. say 
Christopher Kane, uh, Christopher, Christopher Bailey's <laughs> too bland because he's dumbing it down for an audience that isn't a fashion audience. Right, right. But then it goes back to, in a way, it goes back to Susie Menke's point about you know the whole circus that goes on yeah, around absolutely. fashion um, and all of the photographic opportunities and really. What about just moving the bit that is portrayed mm -hmm. yeah. away and yeah. just doing that and so that there isn't the this yeah. kind of whole promotion of the party, which right. is what everybody gets. I love this, where you've got that very sexy low line, but then mm. a jacket covering mm. up. So it's just focusing yes. on one small area yeah. of skin. It's very, very alluring, I think. Yeah, because yeah. for Spring Summer, she did a lot of focus on the back. There was like those little cut out details, but yeah. this is much more. Is that yeah. skin or true yeah, fabric? Yeah, it looks like snake skin, but that's the, that's the actual uh, pattern. It seems it's very it's covered up for you, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yeah. Mm. But it's still the little touches. I, I, think that's I love that. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. One cool thing about Gucci clothes, they're always uncomplicated in the way that I can imagine you just, you don't have to sort of fit you know, roll up the sleeves, add yeah. in the this, do the that. It, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're clothes you, you just put on if you didn't, yes. if you weren't living with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, though. That's quite nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very simple. And textures, I think, for everyone. Huge. Oh, that's yeah, cool. There is so much more labour that goes into some wow, of the embellishments, isn't there? Oh, I was thinking that looking at Michael van der Ham's collection, yeah, which incredible. I thought was ravishing, but yeah. it's so complex for a British house to produce all that embroidery. Yeah, and it's mm. all hand embroidered, hand appliqued. Mm. Like, yeah, he said that the floor length gains were a nightmare, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> but yeah. worth it. So. Uh, wow, the same was as Fido Golan, though, wasn't there, where yes. all of the hand embroidered... Oh, they're working at yeah. couture level, aren't they? Yes. Yes. They really yeah. are. They're, I think they're incredible. That is beautiful, I thought, that dress that we just saw. Yeah, they're stunning. This is like celebrity stylist dream I mean, situation. it's definitely red carpet kind yeah. of vibe, isn't yeah. it? I'm yeah. so intrigued to see what we're going to see on Sunday night at the Oscars. Mm. Mm. I do always Probably think these dresses. that Gucci is, you know, it's for women who are minted and have, you know, not that much to do. It's a taxi. <laughs> it's a ta it's a, well, it's not like a taxi, it's a chauffeur. Like, oh yeah. my God, yeah. Absolutely. It's a limousine <laughs> yeah. outfit, isn't well, it? Well, satin, I always think, yeah. is the most unflattering fabric anyone can wear. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. I think yeah. it's fabulous until you sit down yeah. and then you get back and up and suddenly so you've got like a creased, cropped situation. It's all, all yeah. it's unforgiving, yeah. that's for yeah. sure. For me, the um, you know you mentioned there oh, wasn't much that? flesh on show. We're sort of moving towards a kind of Torval and Dean moment. Yeah, yes. yes. skating yes. outfit. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not very keen. I'm not loving this. You no, know, yeah. and also that's it's very Torval and Dean. Yeah, See, gross. No, I actually, I'm, I'm kind of into this. this. <laughs> but that <laughs> colour too, wouldn't it? It is <laughs> really <laughs> Torval and Dean. Yeah. I really don't like that colour, whoever just said that either. I thought we maybe showed the green. Like the really? Green. I do love a bit of khaki though. Yeah. That green, oh no. Olive no. green, oh no. is that what you'd you, call it? You need you a good skin tone for that. I mm. think it's not, I don't know, I find it really unfortunate. No, I think it's kind of quite sophisticated, although I do like a bottle green car as it, like opposed to black or silver, yeah. so I think there's something okay, kind I of... I don't find that bile is a colour that I find enormous. Bile, I mean, I don't see my bile that regularly, but <laughs> maybe if I examine it. I'm, I'm not loving this. No, I like the very first things way better, no? Mm -hmm. They're more subtle, aren't they? Also, mm -hmm. the hairstyle is really severe. It is, but you know what, this is is runway. I think it's quite clean for clothes that are, are complicated. Yes, suppose, yeah. You know? yeah. There's been quite a yeah. lot of that alien look on the runways this mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And very like straight hair, very it's very un Gucci though. It's normally rather sort of than quite waves, natural rubbishy. and ruffly and, and a lip. Yeah. There's lots of high collars though and lots of collar detail, uh -huh. isn't there? Yeah. So you do want the hair out of the way. Yes. And I mean it's definitely and in decadent. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. in a Gucci sense. But even the fishnet with the open-toed <laughs> sandals, yes. we're still channeling sort of yeah. the ice skating uh, aesthetic, yeah. aren't this we? This is full-on ice skating. If Torval and Dean's not in the mood board in spring, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be really surprised. Uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe it's like Carrie Katona, has she ever done Dancing it's on Ice? Oh, oh God. It's a bit concerning when we're referencing Dancing on Ice at a Melanese fashion yeah. show. I, I would love to know what Alex Fury is saying about this right now. Yeah, I'm very curious. <laughs> He's probably full on slating it. 
Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't hate it for what yeah. it is. I mean, I think you have to appreciate what what Gucci is, there. and mm. I mean, a lot of it is not about everyday wearability. No, it's no. really beautiful yeah. pieces. Yeah, not going to pick up a pint of milk and whatever. No, I like. mean, you're absolutely not <laughs> going in your room. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you see them, you know that there are there are sort of mm. things that will make an instant transition yeah. into a high street look. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the panelling around the um, net. Yeah. And they went to town on the fishnet, though. Do you think yeah. that, wow. that one of the reasons why we're seeing <laughs> these really complex fabrics and complex instructions is to stop the copiers? I mean, I yes. think, yeah. And, you know, the quality of the fabrics, the amount of texture and embellishment. And um, I really felt that in London. The clothes yeah. were much more complicated. Mm -hmm. yes. And Christopher Kane's collection mm. was just so complex. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. 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 Wasn't it? It's stunning. Yeah. Really. I never really thought beautiful. I'd be drooling over a camo Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. Me yeah. neither. It's the first time for everybody. <laughs> but I think See, that's these a really good point. Better, yes. I think. The, these are there beautiful. does yeah. have to that's be that lovely. division. Yeah. Definitely. You know, that between what's happening on the catwalk, which is liable to being instantly copied when mm. it's open for everybody. Yeah. And also the, the immediacy of a high street store watching this and replicating it within weeks, you know, yeah. before this collection is actually available to buy, yeah. which is kind of... It's interesting watching the, the jewel tones are so free. Yeah. She loves a jewel tone. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. loves her though. I mean, she... I think there's something about her that's very she pregnant. Yeah, yes. she is. Yes. I think, I mean, I wish she wasn't. Blimey. Excuse me, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> she's just she's extremely bloated. <laughs> I loved the first half of that collection. I loved all the day wear, the evening wear. Yeah. Was, mm. Don't, yeah, dance. Well, you eyes. know, I think sometimes you need those talking pieces, you know, or like we, we mentioned the Oscars, the red carpet. Like, mm. that's where a lot of yeah, these of people and designers make noise. It's where Gucci is in column inches where yeah. people are talking about a brand so it's not necessarily that they want those pieces mass produced yes. and sold all around the world they just want someone to say you know Kate Hudson wore this fabulous oh, Florence Gucci dress. machine again exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah and then suddenly it's relevant to a younger audience who may buy the coat mm. with a pair of jeans I mean they mm. had sunglasses obviously we had the emphasis on the shoes but I didn't see as many bags as normal me neither mm. and normally there's some close ups show, bag, bag, yeah. bag. well particularly yeah. because Frida came from as head of accessories yeah. so her her strength is there as well I really noticed this and I was writing my kind of what people are wearing round up this morning and no one was carrying big bags at London this season mm. at all it was all about the pouch and the clutch and the mm. folio I have a theory behind that <laughs> I think you look so much more important if you have a pouch because it suggests that you have a driver rather than having to so everyone goes with their like oversized clutch yeah. pretending yeah. that they're oh he's holding my <laughs> telephone then I mean what? generally I just I think the day of the big it the bag, big bag is gone yeah. and it's interesting that she just didn't really show yeah. anything. Mm. I mean, you would yeah. have seen someone big yeah. bag yeah. Yeah, that two true. seasons ago. Yeah, I saw some close-ups of some very normal-looking black bags. Did you see them? No, mm. I there couldn't see them. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's yeah, it's much more subtle. Patent. Yeah. 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 So glamour, full on glamour. Full on glamour. Um, but so a show of two halves, really. Mm, literally. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Because yeah. there was that kind of more whispery, sexy yeah. leg slit, chew yeah. insert, and then it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Avatar gone wrong type thing. <laughs> but actually, that <laughs> presumably <laughs> now for every designer <laughs> has to be part of their offer, the red carpet dress, because the celebrity promotion of course, yeah. label yeah, is so huge. important. Do we ever see a massive amount of Gucci that things like the Golden Globes? Yes, masters? I think so. Because I'm trying to think in my head of any yeah, kind of not recently Gucci issue. dress that uh, I've seen on the red carpet. Mm. Well, maybe not on the red carpet, but it's generally celebrity. There's well. Rihanna wore that dress. Yeah, Rihanna's quite tightly. Yeah, and yeah. Florence, obviously, the, oh, that whole tour was so public. And you know, the outfit was yeah. stunning. Beautiful, really. beautiful. I mean, that's what put Gucci on the radar for me of recent years. Mm -hmm. I, me I mean, it was heavily publicised, but in all the magazines and all the thing, all the photographs, I mean, she looked really incredible, yeah. I thought. It's interesting I how far this aesthetic is from what Florence is wearing. Absolutely. It's that totally lovely 70s and yeah, floor length, that green hippie. Cape mm. one, yeah. They were and really then we fun. got this, which is much more about the body. Mm. Yeah. So if there's, if we think of the country as, uh, each country as brands, mm. um, which brand would you rather wear? Brand Milan, brand London? Brand, brand London, London with bells on. <laughs> brand London! Without <laughs> bells on, isn't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No bells, no bells. I mean, Paris is definitely competing. Yeah, up there. I was yeah. going to say brand, brand Paris for sure. Mm. But, but, but I think brand London is actually 
about you know it's extremely creative as as we mentioned but it's also kind of wearable and a bit like down Fun. to earth you can always pick pieces that you're like yeah definitely wear that and I think you know the Christopher Kane buyout is huge in terms of you know symbolism I suppose I think people will suddenly think okay and it's been happening gradually but the idea that British fashion is no longer just for creatives it's actually a really serious commercial fashion city and I yeah. think that it's it's the combination of the two and they're kind of coming back to basics thinking actually women want to wear clothes so we're going to make wearable clothes but let our imaginations run wild. And uh, Andrea, for you, why brand London? Just because it's more fun, yeah. simple as that. I don't, I don't really, you know, buying into this whole classic investment forever type thing is just not something that appeals to me. Mm -hmm. Even though I can appreciate, you know, mm. someone t explaining to me, you know, how incredible it is to really have that exquisite tailoring, you know, for me, I'm much more attracted to the sort of wild, crazy mm. London vibe. Pretty much. So, <laughs> so the same for you. Um, <laughs> the thing I love about London Fashion Week is that I can sit and watch Fyodor Golan, who are basically doing couture, modern couture. Mm. I can then go and sit in a garage in Carlton Harbour's Terrace <laughs> at 9.30 at night and watch the Thomas Tate show yeah. and remember why I was a fashion editor again because mm. it was so exciting and so different yes. and so brilliant. It was my standout show, I think, yeah. and it probably Thomas was pretty much every editor Thomas who, Tate. who went to yeah. Thomas Tate yeah. as opposed to going to see Rihanna at River Island. Mm -hmm. God. God help us. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Totally I totally agree. So sorry for totally agree. The editors who couldn't go to Thomas Tate because totally they had agree. to go to River Island. Mm. Poor souls. I mean, seriously. Yeah, and also it was revolting in the collection. Oh, yeah, <laughs> shudder. Um, <laughs> but for me, always London because I love the fact that so many different amazing designs can coexist happily on our schedule here and all be equally good. Yeah. So that's it, really. That's a, a thumbs up. I just add myself to that. That's a four thumbs up for yeah. us on London, having just yeah. done it and obviously being. Uh, Patriotic, we'd have to say that, wouldn't we? Yes. But you know, we start um, the beginning of, or, you know, the Milan offer. I think they've got about 80 shows to mm -hmm. go, and, and they are a massive force. Mm. Just walking on the way here and looking at all the Sloan Street yes. boutiques yes. Yes. Yes, is true. really uh, Italian heavy. Yeah. So there's obviously um, there's a place that something that we're missing. Oh. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, yeah. China, no, no, yes. of course. And we still want status <laughs> yeah. clothing. Status clothing, power dressing, and yeah. every one of you has mentioned the sizzle that the, sizzle. the Italians inject. Yeah. Mm. And I, I mean, maybe it's a consequence of being in London in that it's just a bit more lo-fi, but actually th there's still a huge market and people who love to spend mm. cash on fabulous floor-length mm. gowns. So, yeah. So let's hear it for um, uh, the Gucci show. Thank you very much. We enjoyed that. And thank you very much to everybody for uh, joining in on this one. I love chatting to you. Thank yeah, you to my thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.